We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy God, we stand before you as unholy people. In our impatience, we rush into evil thoughts, words, and deeds. In our impertinence, we rebel against your, your will and way, even though you mean it for our good. Forgive us, O Lord, and grant us forgiveness in Jesus and guidance by the Spirit that we learn to wait on you. We pause now for a time of personal confession and reflection. Together we confess, Lord God, Almighty Father, Heavenly King and Judge, ruler of the heavens and the earth, we stand before you as sinful creatures. We know our sin. We feel the effects of our wrongdoing. This is not where we want to be. We are not who you created us to be. Forgive us, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within us that we may walk with you by faith through Jesus Christ and the good news. God knows your sins, your imp impatience, your impotence. But he also knows you as children to whom he desires to father and love and cherish. So in Jesus Christ, his son, he makes salvation a gift and eternity a promise. In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce to you as a called and ordained servant, the good news of forgiveness. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Amen. to death. 
Christ confessing, let us see our Savior's blessing. A special welcome to everyone for joining us this morning at our Savior's Way Lutheran Church. We are indeed blessed to have you share your fellowship with us, and we're glad that you're here. We are continuing to offer these online worship experiences during the COVID-19 crisis with the prayer that a time may come for a refreshing and renewal of you. If you go to our website, www.oswlc.org, you will find resources for further study of God's word, as well as our bulletin for this week. A few announcements, our Savior's Way began a 24-7 prayer vigil during Holy Week, and we have continued that through the pandemic. If you would like us to pray for you or someone you know, or you would like to participate in the vigil, simply go to the website and select the icon News and Announcements where you will find the link to the prayer vigil. Also, the staff and leadership at Our Savior's Way have been working through the guidance of the various federal and commonwealth agency directives to develop a process for pre-opening Our Savior's Way when the conditions permit. Already, the Open Arms Academy has reopened on a limited basis, and we look forward to being able to meet each and every one of you on campus again. So be watching for more information as it is made available on our website. And we continue to especially be thankful for the faithful and continued financial support of Our Savior's Way, its extended family of faith. While the campus had been restricted to access, we continue to meet the obligations that we made prior to the crisis. And we remind you of the various means by which you can support our ministry by signing up for Push Pay on our website or the church app, by texting OSWLC Give to 77977, or by mailing your gifts to the church. Again, we are especially blessed and thankful for your continued support. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path forever O Lord your word is firmly fixed in the heavens your faithfulness endures to all generations you have established the earth and it stands fast by your appointment they stand this day for all things are your servants if your law had not been my delight I would have perished in my affliction I will never forget your precepts for by them you have given me life your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. 
Father God, we are an impatient people in need of the quick fix. When we suffer, we want, no, we demand that somebody do something. We will take an easy solution over the right one if it's faster. Get us beyond that way of living. Teach us not to settle for good when you have better in mind. Teach us to wait on you by focusing on your steadfast love with prayer and trust. Through Jesus Christ, the Savior and friend of us all, amen. Welcome, boys and girls, to our children's message. I'm so glad you're with me today as we learn more about Joseph. This week, before we get started learning all about Joseph, I have something for you guys. So I brought with me a special bag. And in this bag, I'm going to tell you what it is right now, but there's a secret, okay? So I brought in the bag some Oreos. But here's what I'm going to do. I could give you one cookie now, or if you can wait to the end, I'll give you two cookies at the end. Wait till the end, wait till the end. Wait till the end. I want one. You want, want one cookie one. now, or Where's... two cookies at the end? Oh, one, one cookie right now. Okay, but then there'll two be no cookies. cookies at the end. Oh, oh, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna take one cookie. You want one cookie now? Okay. I'll take two we cookies. might end up with some tears later but maybe this will help us with our lesson. So Cora, you're not gonna get a cookie at the end. All right, so today, boys and girls, I wanna talk a little bit about waiting. Cora did not wanna wait for her cookies at the end. She wanted them right now, but Quinn and Judah, they were able to wait. Now, we've had to wait quite a bit, haven't we? We're waiting to get back together, but also maybe you guys have been waiting for things like packages in the mail. I know I'm super excited about some things that I ordered, but no matter how much I check where they're at, it's not gonna speed up the waiting process. So here's where Joseph comes in today. As we learned about Joseph, Joseph, he got to Egypt, but he was put into prison for something that he didn't do. And he was stuck there for a long, long time. But there are some people that came to the prison. They were Helpers of the king, but something see. bad had happened. Something bad. I can't see. You can't see. Here you go, Cora. Now, Joseph, when they had a dream one night, Joseph was able to tell them the meaning of their dream. And Joseph asked one of them, tell the king to let me out. He, he told them, I'm in here for, for something I didn't do. Please help me get out. So Joseph, he was trying to find his own way out of the prison. And it didn't really work. The, the guy, he forgot him. And Joseph was stuck there even longer. And that can happen to us sometimes, right? We can try to stop the waiting to make things go faster on our own, but sometimes it doesn't work. But here's what happened, guys. God hadn't forgotten Joseph. God was going to bring him out. God was going to save Joseph. And God was going to use him to do something great. And here's what I want to tell you guys about. God, he hasn't forgotten about us. He loves us and cares about us so very much. And so today, here's what I want to tell you about. Jesus, he came at just the right time to save us. God, people were waiting for the Savior for many, many years, but God hadn't forgotten. God loves you, and God loves you, and God loves me. And so today, as we wait, we can remember like Joseph, how God hadn't forgotten him, and God hasn't forgotten us. He loves us so very much and sent Jesus to save us. So pray after me, guys, and we'll thank God for all that he's done for us. And then, Quinn and Judah, you can have two cookies. I have two cookies. <laughs> all right, let's pray. Dear Jesus... Thank you so much, Thank you so much that, you love us that you love us and that you came, that you came to save us. Save us. As, we figure out As we figure out how to wait, how to wait. help us to remember, help us to remember that, you that you didn't forget Joseph and you haven't forgotten us. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your love. For your love. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can everyone wave goodbye? Goodbye. Bye. Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We read, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask your, the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as or orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Now as we continue studying the story of Joseph from the book of Genesis, it can be easy to lose track of time. The chapters and the verses in the Bible sometimes portray stories that have large gaps in the chronology. From sentences and paragraphs in the account, we're moved along in the story months or even years. If God, through his holy writers, does not give us an indication of time's passing, most of us figure we're talking about days and weeks, while the timeline is actually years in the making. Joseph's story in Genesis is a prime example of what I'm getting at. When we started this epic tale of a multicolored robe, misery, majesty, and mercy in Genesis 27, Joseph was 17. By, jo by Genesis 41... 
we read that Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. His time of misery was 13 years in duration, or an eternity to a modern teenager. And by the end of the story in Genesis 50, Joseph is a 110-year-old man. His story spans 93 years. It can take your breath away. It means Joseph lived almost as long as Pastor Wickman. Now, we've noted that Joseph's life lesson can be summed up as, you'll get through this. He won't be painless. It won't be quick. Ah, oh, now we see. When we're in a time of toil or tragedy, we feel like time has stopped and we're never getting out of our misery. Never. Pain can do that to you. In life, there are times of waiting. We are waiting for God to reveal the next step of his plan and purpose for our lives. We don't want to wait, but God has all eternity on his side. Max Lucado shares an interesting insight. He says, to wait, biblically speaking, is not to assume the worst, worry, fret, make demands, or take control, nor is waiting inactivity. Waiting is a sustained effort to stay focused on God through prayer and belief. As we pick up Joseph's story from where we left off, Joseph is in the middle of a time of waiting. We're at Genesis chapter 40. Sometime after this, the cupbearer of the king of Egypt and his baker committed an offense against their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. And he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, in the prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard appointed Joseph to be with them, and he attended them. They continued for some time in custody. Did you catch that? Twice in these four verses we read that phrase, some time. In the biblical narrative, that could range from days and weeks to months and years. Some time after his brothers ambushed him. Some time after Potiphar bought him. Some time after being imprisoned. The days, weeks, and months were starting to accumulate for Joseph. But still, he waited on his God. Picking back up at verse 5. And one night they both dreamed, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt who were confined in the prison, each his own dream, and each dream with its own interpretation. When Joseph came to them in the morning, he saw that they were troubled. So he asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in custody in his master's house, Why are your faces downcast today? They said to him, We have had dreams, and there is no one to interpret them. And Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Please tell them to me. So the chief cupbearer told his dream to Joseph and said to him, in my dream there was a vine before me, and on the vine there were three branches. As soon as it budded, the blossoms shot forth, and the clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. Joseph said to him, this is its interpretation. The three branches are three days. In three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your office, and you shall place Pharaoh's cup in his hand as formerly when you were his cupbearer. Only remember me when it is well with you, and please do me the kindness so to mention me to Pharaoh, and so get me out of this house. For I was indeed stolen out of the land of Hebrews, and here also I have done nothing that they should put me into the pit." When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was favorable, he said to Joseph, I also had a dream. There were three cake baskets on my head, and in the uppermost basket, there were all sorts of baked foods for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating it out of the basket on my head. And Joseph answered and said, This is its interpretation. The three baskets are three days. In three days... Pharaoh will lift up your head from you and hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat the flesh from you. On the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, he made a feast for all his servants and lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and the head of the chief baker among his servants. He restored the chief cupbearer to his position 
and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. We have noted that God was with Joseph throughout his ordeal. As the Bible says many times, the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love and gave him favor. Of the many potential outcomes Joseph could have faced, God's providence, plan, and purpose continued to move Joseph closer to his ultimate destination, to be where God needed him to be in order for Joseph to do what God wanted done. Yes, God was faithful, is faithful, but men, not so much. Joseph favorably interprets the chief cupbearer's dream, makes only one request, remember me when it is well with you and do me the kindness to mention me to Pharaoh to get me out of this house. Everything turns out for good for the cupbearer. He gets his job back. What Joseph told him came true, yet the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph but forgot him. Well, that's disappointing. And that's my point. When faced with trials and toil and tragedies, we try to work harder, do more, do things better. And when that inevitably fails, then we turn to others and we expect them to rescue us from our predicaments. We'll decide that either we've done something for which God is punishing us or God simply isn't up to the job. Hope seems to escape us when tragedy strikes and troubles arise. We tend to judge God's goodness based on our own comfort and ease of life. There are many people who only follow God as long as they get what they want from the relationship. The moment difficulty arises or they have to face disappointment or they're denied what they want, they bail. If God is unchanging and good, then he is good all the time, whether we're getting what we want or not. And if God has not changed, then it's our perception that's in error. In life, there are times of waiting, when we're waiting for God to reveal the next step of his plan and purpose for our lives, but we're not good at waiting, never have been, probably never will be. Let's go back to Joseph's great-grandfather, Abraham. Abraham and Sarah were an old couple who had been childless. The Bible indicates Sarah had passed her childbearing years. Now God had promised that he would give them a son. But after some time had passed and there was no child, Sarah took matters into her own hands. She encouraged Abraham to sleep with her servant, an Egyptian by the name of Hagar, who gave birth to a son whom Abram named, now wait for this, Ishmael and God still delivered on his promise and later Sarah gave birth to Isaac Joseph's grandfather but now there was enmity between her and Hagar and their sons Ishmael and Isaac and in fact it was so bad that Abraham sent Hagar and Ishmael away now Ishmael is the father of the Ishmaelites who bought and traded Joseph off to Potiphar these Ishmaelites were cousins to Joseph. And their descendants are the various Arab peoples in the world today. So in the Middle East, we seem to have constant war and violence among people who can trace their heritage to a common ancestry simply because Sarah and Abraham did not trust God at his word. They did not wait. Thankfully, Joseph did not repeat the mistake of his great-grandparents. He couldn't depend on his family. He couldn't depend on friends. He did all the right things, helped others in their time of need, only to be forgotten by them when circumstances changed favorably for them. Yet through it all, Joseph waited on God. Repeating what was said earlier, waiting is a sustained effort to stay focused on God through prayer and belief. Joseph was faithful. Because he knew who God was and that he cared for him. Now others may have acted toward him with evil intent, forgot about him once things started going their way. But God intended for all these things to shape Joseph's journey. From multicolored robe and misery 
to majesty and mercy. Why doesn't God do something? Why doesn't he act now? Ever hear people complain about God's timing? Maybe have you complained about God being slow to act? Well, the prophet Isaiah actually has an answer to that. He says, And those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. The idea of waiting may not sit well with a microwave generation or a milieu of instant gratification, but there is a time to, as David puts it, be still and know that I am God. Abraham waited decades for his promised son. Jacob waited and worked for decades to have Rachel, Joseph's mother, to be one of his wives. God's people waited millennia for the Messiah to come. We await Jesus' second coming when he will come to take us where God wants us to be, a place whose doors are open because the good shepherd Jesus opens them for us. God's sense of time is not measured on the basis of man's clocks. If you would, please turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 3, picking up at verse 8 where the apostle says, But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient towards you not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. If we know and if we trust God is at work in the world, then we realize he has me in mind along with millions of others. Just because I feel ready to move on to the next stage does not mean everyone else is. No, God is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish. We need to learn to wait on our gracious and patient God. Psalm 27 puts it this way. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. And St. Paul wrote to the Galatians, told them that for through the Spirit by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness, which of course is found only in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, once again, I share this advice as a life lesson to be embraced. You'll get through this. It won't be painless. It won't be quick. God will use this mess for good. Don't be foolish or naive, but don't despair either. With God's help, you'll get through this. Amen.
to let, together let us boldly profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, with you a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years but a day. In our fears and anxiety, we want and expect you to rush in to save the day. But hardship produces character and shapes us into the people you call us to be. Keep us mindful of your presence and calm us in our impatience. Hear our prayers and answer them in accordance with your divine wisdom from above. We pray for a world in crisis and a nation in lockdown, O oh God. We are so tired, so tired of what seems to be a never-ending story of despair and hopelessness. It feels like we are never going to get back to normal. Gone are the normal day-to-day -day activities and weekly events that used to fill our hours. And quite frankly, it is uncertain if we will ever get back to the way things were. Teach us patience, O oh Lord. Remind us that every moment of every hour of every day is in your hands. Lead us into the new normal with eyes and hearts upon your guiding and the needs of our fellow man. We continue to pray for our leaders, Donald, our president, Ralph, our governor, the Congress and Commonwealth legislatures, and especially for our medical and health care personnel. We thank you for first responders who continue to answer our calls for help our military who still face off against our enemies, foreign and domestic, and even microscopic. For teachers struggling to teach online, administrators trying to plan for what's next, students trying to learn in isolation, be an encouraging presence in all our lives, dear God. And we pray for those who are sick or injured, for those who are cut off from loved ones because of quarantine, we pray for those who have lost loved ones and who mourn the empty place in their hearts. We pray for the unemployed and underemployed, as well as for those who continue to work and provide for their families. We pause now especially to pray silently and lift those in our hearts to you. And Heavenly Father, we ask your mercies be poured upon all of us in Jesus' name. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in our kingdom and teach us to pray as together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You will get through this. It won't be painless. It won't be quick. God will use this mess for good, but don't despair. With God's help, you will get through this. Amen.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.